Hey, kids! Hi. We're gonna do a bedtime story. Are you guys ready for a bedtime story? I love these kind of stories. Oh, good. You love these kind of stories. Okay, so this story is called Dragon Tales, and this is Chapter One, Eloy's Dragon. Eloy's. Are you ready? All right, here we go. There once was a little boy. He lived in a big castle in a magical land. His name was Eloy. The castle he and his family lived in was so big, it had lots of empty rooms upstairs on floors that he had never visited. His parents told him never to go into those empty rooms on the third floor of their big old castle. For a long time, Eloy was happy playing in the rooms where he was allowed to go, but each day he found himself thinking about those empty rooms upstairs. After all, if they were really empty, why would it matter if he went into them? Maybe they weren't empty at all. Perhaps they were filled with good things that a little boy would love, like candy, toy cars, and bicycles. He wondered what kind of treasures those empty rooms held. One day, when his parents were gone and he was alone in that big castle, he went up to the third floor. He crept quietly, even though he was alone, and he was excited to be on the third floor, but he was also scared. He opened the first door to the first empty room, and he was sad to find that it really was empty, or at least he thought so at first. He stepped in and looked around. He saw something shiny, red, and round on the floor in the middle of that big empty room. It looked exactly like a tiny egg, except for the fact that it glowed red. He knelt to take a closer look. He reached out and was about to touch it when all of a sudden it cracked wide open. He laughed as a tiny red dragon crawled out of the broken eggshell. It looked up at him with fiery eyes and wriggled a small forked tongue. Eloy thought he was the cutest thing he had ever seen. He reached out his hand and let the little dragon climb on. As he went downstairs, he decided to call the dragon Baffle. As soon as he said it, he realized that no other name was right. He put the little red creature on his shoulder. The dragon tickled his ear with his pronged tongue. Later that day, when Eloy's parents got home, he wanted to tell them, but he decided not to. If he told them about Baffle, the baby dragon, they would ask where he came from. Eloy would then be forced to tell them he had gone into one of the empty rooms on the third floor. No, he thought, he would have to keep it a secret. There were lots of times over the next few days when Eloy's parents looked right at the place where little Baffle was, and they didn't see him. It didn't take long before Eloy realized that his parents couldn't see the dragon. What luck, Eloy thought. I've got an invisible fire dragon. One day, Eloy's parents told him to clean his room. Eloy didn't want to. He was having fun drawing pictures of Baffle. The little red dragon was having fun too, posing for the pictures. Eloy decided to ignore and disobey his parents. At the very second that Eloy decided to disobey his mom, Baffle grew three inches longer. Eloy was amazed. Not long after that, Eloy lost his temper with his little sister, Eli. As soon as he yelled at her, once again Baffle grew five inches. Another time, Eloy told a lie to his dad. Even though his dad couldn't see it, Baffle grew nine inches longer and started to talk to Eloy. Before long, Baffle would hardly fit in Eloy's room because he was so big and Baffle wouldn't stop talking. He loved his dragon, but he was starting to feel crowded, and he was scared of the things Baffle told him to do. 
Each time his parents told him to do something, Baffle would say, Don't do what your parents say. They are just trying to keep you from having fun. If Eloy disobeyed his parents and did what Baffle said, the dragon would grow and get louder still. A few times, Eloy tried to ignore Baffle, but the red dragon would spit smoky balls of fire at Eloy and growl at him. Rawr! Baffle had become too hot to handle and too hard to harness. Almost every second of the day, Baffle was telling Eloy to do something bad. It got to the point where Eloy was doing every bad thing his red dragon told him to do because it was easier than resisting. Baffle got so big, it no longer felt like the dragon belonged to Eloy, but instead that Eloy belonged to the dragon. Eloy realized that he had to tell someone about his problem. He went to his youngest brother, Elio, but he was too little to understand. Next, he tried his sister, Eli. Eli, I found a dragon, Eloy said. With that, Eli's eyes got very wide. Does she grow and yell at you and spit fire and no one can see her but you? Eli asked. My dragon's a boy, but he does grow and yells and spits fire and no one can see him but me, Eloy said. But then he added, Hey, how did you know all that? I have one too. I named her Baffle, Eli said. <gasps> Eloy was so surprised he could have eaten his own fingers. I named mine Baffle too, Eloy said. They stared at each other for a long time before either spoke. Is your Baffle screaming at you right now? Eloy asked. Yes, is yours? Eli asked. Yeah. He doesn't want me to tell anyone about him, Eloy said. Right at that moment, Baffle blasted a hot red ball of fire at Eloy. Even though it was invisible, it hurt really bad. Ooh. So, what do we do, Eloy said. We need to ask for help. I think we should go see Wizard Wadley Wobblewog, Eli said as she jumped probably because Baffle was shooting her with invisible fire, too. Who's Wizard Wadley Wobblewog? Eloy asked. He's a wise wizard who lives in a soggy log near the Hog Dog Bog. So you're saying we need to go see the wise wizard Wadley Wobblewog in a soggy log near Hog Dog Bog? Eloy asked. Well, I don't think I can say all that, but yes, I think he'll know exactly what to do. He's just the sort that would know how to deal with the dragon problem, Ely said. They began packing their things right away. With their baffles growling at them both, they decided to set out on their journey the next morning, since it would be a Saturday and they didn't have school. To be continued. Find out what happens in the next chapter of The Dragon Tales. I have some questions to talk to you about after the story. Did you notice in the story that it talked a little bit about temptation and sin? It didn't use those words, but it was the same thing. Do you know what temptation is? Temptation is when you want to do a sin really bad. Do you know what a sin is? What? A sin, oh, yes. do you know? Yeah, what, what is it? It's something when you do when you're not supposed to do it. That's right. Like in the story where he didn't clean up his room. That's right. So a sin is when you disobey what God wants you to do, or when you disobey what your parents want you to do, or when you do something bad. That's exactly right. So can you name some sins? Mm. Can you think of any? Some of the things we just said. Not obeying your mom or dad. That's a good one, yeah. I mean, it's not a good one to do, but that's true. Not obeying your mom or dad. Another one would be hurting other people on purpose. Have you ever hurt somebody on purpose? Uh, yes. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, and that's a sin, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Another one might be saying mean things. It's just 
because I kind of lost my temper. You lost your temper. There's another sin. So those are all sins. So what happens when we sin, do you know? God forgives us. God will forgive us. But what happens to us if we sin and we keep sinning? What? We want to sin more. One of the things that happens when you sin is that you'll want to do that sin even more. Have you ever noticed that? Have you ever noticed that when you sin, sometimes you want to do it more? It's kind of like how Baffle, you remember how when Eloy did something bad, Baffle got bigger and stronger and louder? And it got to the point where Eloy couldn't ignore Baffle anymore. He couldn't say no to Baffle. And so he started to do whatever Baffle told him. What well, do you know, sin is kind of like that. Baffle's not real. Yeah, Baffle's make-believe. It's a story that helps us understand something about sin. Baffle's kind of like that angel that's bad. That angel that's bad. Yeah, do you remember his name? No. Satan. Satan, Satan. that's Satan. right. Yeah, he's a fallen angel. So Baffle's kind of like that. In. And he's even a red dragon. He's even a red dragon, yeah. So so baffle is kind of represents sin. And as, as we sin, it becomes easier and easier to sin. Or we could think of it this way, harder and harder to stop sinning. Have you ever noticed that, that sometimes it's hard to not sin? It's hard it's to... it's kind of fun. But it's kind of fun, yeah. But after a while, it kind of gets bad because your parents don't like it. That's true, yeah. It kind of can get bad. Temptation is when we want to do a sin really bad. So when we have temptation, that means we want to do a sin. So what could we do about wanting to do sin really bad? Should we just do the sin? No. Should we just try really, really hard not to do the sin? Uh, no. Yeah, that doesn't... We, shouldn't, we just shouldn't do it. Did you know that Jesus actually gives us a way to get out of sin and out of temptation. Did you ever hear that? Well, I'm glad you asked. So we can't really do it on our own. So here, look at look at Daddy. Look how look how Daddy is pretty big and pretty strong, right? But even Daddy can't say no to sin on his own. Daddy needs help. Who do you think helps Daddy to work on? Who who are you pointing at? G g g who? God. God. God helps. But what does Daddy need to do in order to get God to help me? not sin. Well, believe, that's true. Believe first, but then what do I do when I'm feeling like I really want to sin? Like if I feel like I want to lose my temper, what is that? Praying. Praying. That's right. Okay. Do you know this? Let me, let, I'll tell you what let's do. Let's read a verse. Do you want to, you want to read a verse together? Yeah. This was a time when Jesus was telling his disciples that they needed to stay awake. He wanted them to stay awake. He said he didn't want them to go to bed yet because some important things were going to happen. But you know what? You know what? They were really, really tempted to go to sleep because they were really tired. So notice what Jesus says. He said, pray for strength against temptation. Can you say that? Pray. Pray for strength. 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 Against. Against. Temptation. Temptation. There you go. Pray for strength against temptation. So what that means is when they're tempted, when they want to sin really bad, what Jesus is telling them to do is to pray about it. Pray that God would help them not sin. Let's say that brother has a toy of yours and you want to rip it out of his hand so bad. And you, you, you think, I can't help it. I just have to rip it out of his hands. But what could you do? You could pray, couldn't you? And what, what would you say? God, please help me not to do it. That's right. You could say, God, please help me not to do a bad thing. Eli actually ripped something out of my hand today. Did he really? A stick. Well, I wonder if he prayed about it beforehand. <laughs> I bet not. Nope. I wonder if he could have resisted if he would have asked the Lord he to help him. Know that. He Let me just give you an example, and then we'll finish up. So here's, an, here's a prayer that we can pray. And this is a prayer that Daddy prays pretty often, or something like this. It might go like this. Here, listen. Lord, help me not to do what is wrong, but to do what is right. Amen. Would that be a pretty easy prayer to pray? Mm -hmm. I think so. Lord, help me not to do what is wrong, but to do what is right. Would you want to would you want to pray that even tonight maybe before we go to bed? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> oh, you're being silly. You know what? I think we're getting so silly we probably better
All right. Well, thanks for listening, everybody, and we will see you, or maybe hear you, on the next episode.